Welcome back. It is Thursday, December 7th in the NBA. My five favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday, a two and three day, but a frustrating one at that. Let's talk about it. Day one of our ladder challenge did hit. Hopefully you guys tailed that. We're going to have day two posted a little bit later on today. So stay tuned for that. And Macau Bridges was a part of the ladder and he got over his 34 and a half PRAs. Now the losers were the where it was annoying. Draymond Green under nine and a half points. Uh, he scores 10 in the first half. I go to bed. Ends with 10. It was just, he had a tip in with like a second left. That was his 10th point. Ended on the hook there. Now, Kuzma's over in rebounds. He had like three or four in the first quarter. And then I swear they took away one or two. He ended with three. Just not a good rebounded game from him. And then the really one that was frustrating was the Sangoon same game parlay where I had him for 20 points, seven rebounds, three assists. Now, there is a good chance that a lot of people out there did cash because any prop pretty much for Sangoon that involved his points plus assists or is 20 and four cashed, which were my two pivots. Of course, the one play I take for him does not hit. I don't blame him. He only had six rebounds. That's how we lost another one on the hook. His teammate, what, Sir Jabari Smith Jr. had like 18 rebounds. He just didn't grab any boards. Either way, should have been better than a two and three day, but you know, no dice, no luck yesterday. We'll, we'll go, whatever. We'll move on. But today we got five picks today. Let's talk about them. A reminder, it is Thursday Night Football. My video for the game is not live yet. Normally it is by the time this video drops. However, I didn't have any lines yesterday to make games. I do have a little bit more lines, so I'll be posting that video a little bit later on. By noon, definitely by the latest, so you stay tuned for that. And like I said, day two of the ladder challenge will be live later on today. So definitely stay tuned for both those things. I'll link them in the pinned comment when they are live. And if you are new, just hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any of that stuff. But let's have in the picks day we got two in-season tournament games if a lot of people actually probably don't know this i am going to the in-season tournament finals so i will be in vegas actually we leave saturday morning to go to that game i thought it'd be really cool to take my dad to so should be fun so i'm i'm excited to see whichever teams i get to see i'm happy with pacers or bucks going there and i'm happy with pelicans and lakers either way it should be great games today they start at 5 p.m so get them locked in let's dive into our picks though today we're diving into the first one the guy in my shirt the Greek freak, Giannis Attentacumpo, over 50 and a half PRAs, points, rebounds, and assists, minus 120 on BetMGM. If you need an individual line, I think points is the easiest way to go for Giannis, which is, I think, 32, 33 and a half, which is super high, but... And when you hear my analysis, you'll see why I think the Greek Freak can get that done rather easily. Now, obviously, taking a PRA line this high is going to be tough to get. But Giannis has shown and made, made tough look easy in his NBA career. And in their last game versus the Knicks in that in-season tournament game, that winner go home game, Giannis, 35 points on 15 of 22 shooting. Four for nine from the free throw line. So didn't miss five free throws. Maybe he sees a little bit better shooting there. But eight rebounds and ten assists. Good for 53 PRAs. Now, that was a really tough matchup. The Knicks are a team that is a very good defensively. And honestly... They tried their best to slow down Giannis. It was just a, an elimination game, if you will. And Giannis is going to do his thing. Ten assists is a lot higher than I would expect today, but the eight rebounds a lot lower than I would expect today. And we saw him only play 34 minutes in that game. Heck, they were up by like 25 in the third quarter or fourth quarter. So they didn't need him a ton towards the close of that game. I think they'll need him a little bit more tonight against the Pacers. And in that game, the Bucks could not miss from the three-point line. They went 23 for 38 from the three-point line. A ridiculous number. This is a team in Indiana that they will face. It allows the fewest three-pointers in the NBA. So they're going to run them off the three-point line, but they do allow the most points per game in the paint. So this sets up perfectly for Giannis as it doesn't you know, set up perfectly for his teammates, maybe like Malik Beasley's of the world. I almost took a Beasley under today, but I'm cursed on unders, but it probably smacks. But I just think this is a much better game for Giannis to be aggressive in. And still, he was he still scored 35 points in a the game. They could not miss from three-point land. But we'll look at this matchup. Giannis has just destroyed the Pacers in his career, but especially over the last five matchups. Just look at these last five. He's had 68, 59, 39, 67, and 69 PRAs going over this line in four or five. His only miss, 27 minutes due to foul trouble. If he plays his normal minutes, he probably still hits this, but... He just dropped 40, uh, 54 points against them earlier this season. Like I said, this is a perfect matchup for him in a must-win game on the road. I don't expect all of his teammates to show up. This is a game where Giannis can just dominate. We saw the Pacers give up tons of free layups to Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Yeah, they're going to have their hands full trying to stop Giannis coming down the paint. But I think they would rather Giannis score two pointers than let their guys get hot from three. Because then it's tough to beat the Bucs if they're making 23 three pointers, which I guarantee you will not happen again. But either way, I really like Giannis today. He's going to fill the stat sheet. Tonight, we're riding with tonight. We're getting Greek freaky, as I always say. Take us over 50 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He's just dominated the Pacers. He'll dominate them again tonight. Now, my second pick, and you'll see this, I have two picks in each game. We're going to have one player prop that I love, and then the same game parlay involving a couple other players. Same thing for both games. And then the fifth pick, 
I think you'll know what it is, but we'll stay tuned for it. This one's going to be a three-leg same-game parlay. It involves Cyrus Halliburton and Damian Lillard. Now, for Halliburton, we need 25 points from him and 10 assists. And Damian Lillard, we need 20-plus points from him, plus 100 on BetMGM. Every book was right around the same odds here. And I was so close to running it back with Halliburton, taking his over and points plus assists. But man, they made the line 40 and a half, and I just can't do that. Now, I think he can get that. It's Halley Wagon. He's the GOAT, and this over-under is at 254 and a half, which is just, just mind-boggling. But 40 and a half is asking Halliburton to play nearly perfect. And sure, he can do that. He's done it time and time again this season. But I think this is easier for him to get 25 points and 10 assists than to get a 40 and a half PRA line or points plus assist line. And his PRA line is like 44 and a half. But Dame Lillard, he's going to be a free square to score 20 tonight. He's done that in 10 of his last 11 games. And Dame only shot 13 times last game. Like I said, his teammates were knocking down shots like crazy and Giannis was going berserk. But this is a game where I think they run the guys off the three point line and we see Dame just attack the rim. He's great at foul getting into the free throw line. Great at finishing too. Dame will score 20 points tonight against the Pacers who don't play much defense. They did play better defense in that game against the Celtics, but they still let Damian or Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum get wherever they wanted. And that even Derek White at 18 points. Dame will score 20, which he's done, like I said, in 10 of his last 11. Now, Halliburton, I think this is what it comes down to. If he can get 25 and 10, I really like him to score the 25. Could come down the assist, but there's a guy in Halliburton that plays a ton of minutes. And we saw last game against this against this uh, Celtics team, 26 points and 13 assists. He shot only 18 times. I think he could shoot a little bit more tonight. And we've seen in their previous game versus Milwaukee, he had 29 and 10. I think he had 26 potential assists in that game. Like I said, he played 40 minutes. That's a lot of minutes out there for Halliburton. We know he's great at passing the ball. 10 assists in 14 of 17 games. But we talked about this. I swear I'm a broken, broken record at this point. The Bucs can't guard guards. We've seen that. We saw that, you know, against the Knicks, although Jalen Brunson didn't have the biggest game. He still got to his spots with Brooke Lopez playing a ton of drop coverage. Halliburton will have basically any three-pointer that he wants tonight. So I'm confident he gets the 25 points. He might even score 30 tonight. I also think he can get the assist. We know how great he is at pushing the ball in transition, getting it to his teammates, and they will knock down some shots. So I really like this. 25-10 from Halley, 20 points from Dame. I really like it at plus 100 on Ben MGM. I'll take a stab at that one. As for who I think wins that game, I lean the Bucks, but if I have to be honest, probably rooting for the Pacers because I think it would be really cool to see the Pacers uh, in Vegas. So I, I love Halliburton, but I also love Giannis. I just saw Giannis a few weeks back in that day in the life video. So I'm comfortable with either of these two teams winning at 5 p.m. Eastern. I think it's going to be a great game. Like I said, you don't set the over under to 254 and a half. Not expect some points. So turn in under that one will be the first all oh, the third all-star game of this season. Now let's go to the second game, Lakers versus Pelicans. I'm gonna go with the guy that is on the thumbnail for my favorite favorite player prop. It is LeBron James over 35 and a half points plus assist, minus 110 on points bet. Now I would take this at 36 and a half. However, if it does go up there, check his PRA line. I think LeBron gets you seven boards tonight. However, the difference was eight. And I really not rather not count on LeBron to at least get eight rebounds to make these lines equal PRA and PA. Or and he would need nine to get it done. Because I feel like this is a game where LeBron has to carry them so hard offensively that he probably just doesn't do much on defense. And while sure you could say, oh, he's not doing much, I think that translates to him not trying to grab a ton of rebounds. Uh, just flash forward to the halftime when he has eight boards, and I'm just shaking my head why I didn't take his PRA line. But at the end of the day, I really like LeBron to have his hand, the ball in his hands a ton and really dictate their game offensively. And we saw in that last game versus Phoenix, LeBron, 31 points, 12 of 25 shooting, and 11 assists on 18 potential assists. He played 40 minutes in that game. This is just the Lakers team that still is working back a lot of guys from injury, and they really need him out there to score the basketball and really facilitate this offense. Now, Anthony Davis can do his job, but... And they don't really like having AD go one-on-one -on, -one on guys. And I don't really think that's the real matchup they want to target tonight. I think this is a game where we see them play a lot of LeBron in the pick and roll. And we see LeBron and AD running that pick and roll, forcing Jonas Valanciunas to play defense. Because Jonas... Yeah, he doesn't play a whole lot of defense, and he's very slow on his feet. We just saw Devonta Savonis have a big game against him, and I think AD probably is a good game, but I think it's going to be a lot of, you know, screen and rolls in the roll, and he, if, if Jonas doesn't come up and try to guard AD, LeBron will get a free lay-in, and vice versa. If he comes up and guards uh, AD or LeBron, you're going to see him dump it off to AD for an easy dunk or an easy lay-in, which is why I really like this one. Look, it's LeBron James in a game that he's already talked about a ton that he really wants to win this in-season tournament. Pretty sure he plays a ton of minutes tonight, and while he likely gets defended by Herb Jones, a very good defender, I'm still confident in the King getting us 36 points plus assists. If he even gets near 25 field goal attempts, I will live with this any day of the night. Also like his assist too. So we just saw him, like I said, have 31 and 11. 
think we could see another recipe of that again tonight, or heck, he could score 35 points alone. But we all would know Lebron's always going to make that right pass and the right play. I'll take his over in points plus assists. If you want to take PRAs, I'm cool there. Now, next up, we got a two-leg same game parlay. Going to go to the other side, talk about two Pelicans players. And they are two. That is not Zion Williamson. I'm taking Brandon Ingram, 20 plus points, and CJ McCollum, 15 plus points. This is plus 100 on BetMGM. Similar to the first same game parlay in this video. Very similar odds on almost every other book on FanDuel, on a Bet365 actually aligned for this one. DraftKings, give or take, they're all about the same. And I really like these two guys tonight. Now, naturally, I don't have Zion in here, and I would probably guarantee he scores 20 points because that's just how it is. But I also think this is a tough matchup to score points in the paint. We've seen that against the Lakers, a team that doesn't allow a ton of points in the paint. They kind of make you beat you from the outside the mid-range in the three-point line, which is kind of where these guys do majority of their damage. Now, since his return back from injury, CJ McCollum has played pretty well. He scored 20, 19, and 17 points. He's attempted 16, 18, and 14 field goal attempts. He scored 15 plus in five of his last six versus the Lakers. His one miss was a game he shot 13. He scored 13 points, five of 17 from the field. This just feels like a more, you know, fast-paced game. And this feels like a game where CJ McCollum will be needed to score the basketball. Didn't get to the free throw line last game, which he normally does at least get there a couple times. And I just don't think the Lakers have the best matchup for him. Maybe D'Angelo Russell guards him, but CJ should be able to get to his spot. They're probably going to put their better defenders on Ingram and Zion and then have AD lurk around in the paint. I think this is a great spot for CJ to do his job. It's the Lakers team that gives up a lot of a lot of three-pointers. I believe the sixth most in the NBA. So this feels like CJ McCollum will be knocking down some threes. Now, Ingram on the other side, I like him. He's reliable. 20-plus points in 15 of 19 this season. Scored 30 in their last game on 20 shot attempts against the Sacramento Kings. Now, a different matchup against the Lakers, but Ingram scored 20-plus in 10 of his last 12 versus the Lakers. This is obviously a revenge game spot, if you will. And while I don't think... Really, it means a ton to Ingram to go up against his former squad. But maybe if there's a little bit of added uh, motivation there, we'll take it. And we'll take anything we can get. But this is a Lakers team that they could probably double Zion in all his drives. I just don't think you're doing the same thing on Brandon Ingram. This feels like a game where you're just like, you know what? Brandon Ingram, if you want to make some shots, make some tough shots over our guys, we'll live with it. And that's kind of Brandon Ingram's calling card. He makes those tough shots. He gets to the free throw line. And that's what he does. So I really like this matchup for both these two guys to get us 20 points and 15. I really was close to taking McCollum's over in points or points plus assists, but I felt like his lines were pretty sharp at like 23 and a half, 24 and a half. So I'll just ride this same game parlay at plus 100. I think it's a great bet to make Brandon Ingram 20 points and CJ McCollum 15 plus points. I really feel like these are the two guys that have to carry their offense tonight. A lot of people are going to be Trey Murphy, which I don't hate, but I'd rather these two guys. They're a little bit more reliable. So 20 and 15 from Ingram and McCollum, my fourth pick of the day. And as a reminder, the fifth pick will be day two of the ladder challenge. I was hoping we'd get some NFL in here, but it doesn't look like we're getting some alternate lines there. But stay tuned for it. Check the pinned comment when it is live. If you follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, any of the other social medias, I obviously post our little short video with it. So hopefully we can climb to day three. That'll be posted later on today. After this video goes live, I'll be working on our NFL one. So probably going to be a little bit later than you know the 11 uh, a.m that I had yesterday for the ladder. Probably going to wait a little bit, but you will see that Monday Night Football video, or not Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football video. When that is live, it will be on the screen. A reminder, we play each ladder challenge for one unit as a, in addition to the rollover. So let's have a wonderful day. Five picks, two games. Let's dominate. Ladder challenge will be live later on today. When it is live, I'll link it on the screen. Like I said, that Thursday Night Football video, when that is live, probably in a couple hours, it will be linked on the screen as well. Have a wonderful Thursday. Let's dominate. Let's bring up the brooms once again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.